Okay, guys. Um, now that we've got our, we've ensured that our printer is printing correctly, uh, and we've ensured that our movement is correct. We've modified our firmware. We're happy with our auto level. We're happy with our G-code setup. Uh, now what we need to do is all of the extras that make life easier. Um, <clears throat> if some of you got to the point where you were trying to print on your bed without a heated bed and you got frustrated because you have to push the nozzle in really close to the bed, you have to go really slow to start out with, um, you have to coat it with something that's an adhesive like uh, some sort of glue or I, I personally use hairspray uh, because it comes off easily. Um, if you're frustrated with all that, your solution lies in a heated bed. <clears throat> and now this heated bed is awesome. I've put this on another printer before. This comes from Trinity Labs and this is basically an adhesive heated bed. So what that means is, you've got your glass, you want to upgrade, you buy this, you stick it to that, and you're done. Well, of course we have to wire some things up. The, uh, the kit comes with uh, no leads, bare wires, so you're going to want to attach something that makes, makes it possible to connect it to, to your hardware for your thermocouple. Um, and your power for your heated bed is going to be controlled uh, by, it's going to be connected to screw terminals. So this is perfect. They even got it stripped for you. It's nice. Yeah, the thermocouple, is, or the thermistor, I'm sorry, that's not a thermocouple. The thermistor <coughs> is attached with a very small piece of Kapton tape. I might I might suggest putting another piece of Kapton tape on here because on my other printer I moved it enough that the caps on tape did come unstuck, um, so maybe you want to do that. But um, I'm going to go ahead and put this down and show you how this works. Okay, so we we have our heated bed, and on the back we've got the adhesive. So all you have to do is, uh, if you look at my my printer, I have all of my hardware over here, and I have set my printer up so that I, or my bed, so that I know where it goes um, with the pieces already on there. Um, so all we have to do is simply got to kind of work at it, peel this off, and what we're going to be left with is a nice sticky layer of Kapton. Now you want to be careful at this point and make sure that you center it correctly. So I, I would suggest holding it over what you believe to be the center. It doesn't have to be perfect. And simply press down in the middle and work your way out. And as you can see I've already got my bed clips on here and I don't really want to take them off. So I'm going to take a straight edge and go ahead and just cut around that where it doesn't fit just because I'm lazy. You don't have to do this, pull your bed clips off. Honestly it doesn't make a big deal to me if as long as you don't cut as long as you don't cut your conductive strip all the way through or I wouldn't suggest cutting it at all uh, you'll be fine so like I said I'm just gonna sort of nip it around here <clears throat> now while I'm at it I might as well put the spring system in place now, like I I'd said in an earlier video, these clips are, are made to be spring bed clips. And getting a hold of hex head M3 screws is a pain in the butt. Uh, all the hardware stores carry M4 and above. You have to do a special order. So I have those ordered for Friday. But we're going to go ahead and put this on like this. With the... With the... Uh, with these... Hex head bolts.
So what you need is a set of the bed clips, a set of springs, and I'm not going to cut these springs. However, I usually do, um, sacrificing bill height for uniformity. They don't have these springs in, in shorter dimensions uh, that I've found. Uh, as for the springs, they are number 113 compression springs. Uh, and I got these from Fastenal. If you want the product number, there it is. But um, I like these. They're thick. It's a heavy gauge. It works pretty well. And what you want to do is you simply slide your bolt in. We're going to place a lock washer and we're going to screw this down tight. Afterward we fit this over. We compress the spring by placing our corner piece on top and what this will do will it will expose the threads and give you a nice good a good tension on your bed so that it it doesn't deform uh, when you're doing probings uh, so this will make sure that it's still pretty solid as far as far as the bed is concerned and afterward once you've got your springs compressed and your bed in place you go ahead and put a normal nut and screw it on top and what this is going to allow you to do is let's say let's say your, your printer's not perfect let's say this is your first printer you ever built and it has this deformity in which after you do your auto leveling it still doesn't print uniformly let's say one corner of this is higher than the other corner and you just tried everything you're trying to get it to work this is going to allow you to you print your first layer very slow <clears throat> and you set your increase to 50 millimeters per layer and then you're back up to normal speed pretty quick um, so you print your first layer slow and if you notice that the filament isn't close enough to the bed on this side you simply unscrew and your bed will tilt up you notice that it's too close to the bed over here you can just simply screw that down and it'll adjust the bed uh, as you need so for people looking for a really easy fix this is gonna fix it for them um, after you've got the bed uh, uh, oriented correctly what this is gonna do is it's going to introduce a slight slant your parts not gonna be slanted it's going to be built on a slant so that's something that you're gonna gonna experience if you if you do have to uh, change the level of your bed but that's the way it works I'm gonna go ahead and put it together and then I'm gonna show you guys how to wire up the heated bed